Glenn was a registered surveyor for many, many years. He was doing a lot of travelling and wasn't spending much time at home. And a job came up within the Department of Land and Water Conservation and, yeah, he was involved with native vegetation and became a compliance officer. He loved going out and talking to farmers. He hated being in the office and his favourite part of the job was to just go out and chat to old mates <laughs> and more often than not be yeah, invited in for a cup of tea and cake or something and he just loved that. Glenn Turner and Robert Strange, his colleague, were environment officers investigating illegal land clearing in the Moree district of New South Wales. Glenn knew the area well and wanted to show Robert around, and they drove up toward the small town of Cropper Creek in the centre of the Golden Triangle, Australia's richest agricultural region. As they were driving, they saw stacks of trees ablaze in the field. They pulled over to take photographs and GPS readings. Glenn knew the property belonged to the Turnbull family and that they did not have permission to clear the trees. He had already prosecuted them for illegal land clearing. They turned left into Telga Lane and stopped twice more to take photographs. Word got back to Ian Turnbull who had been driving one of the bulldozers, that the officers had been seen taking photos in the area. Turnbull drove down Telga Lane looking for them. Robert Strange, seen here in police footage, heard a car pull up and turned around to see Ian Turnbull aiming a rifle at Glenn. And then, without warning, firing the first shot which hit him in the chin. Glenn went down on one knee and then staggered back to his feet. He was bleeding from the face but called out, What are you doing, Ian? Turnbull took aim and fired a second time, hitting Glenn in the shoulder and knocking him to the ground. Glenn moved back towards the vehicle and crouched down near the passenger side door. Robert pleaded with the gunman to stop firing. Turnbull's response was, he's not leaving here unless he's in a body bag. It was just an ordinary day. The day before Glenn was shot, I rang him, or at least he rang me, because I'd left a message saying that the koala colonies were being bulldozed, please help us. And he said, look, I'll be up in a couple of days. I'll call in for a cup of tea. I'm coming in anyway. And he said, Elaine, I've told you before, go to my superiors, go to the media, so we get some action. That's what I did. That night, on the Monday night, I rang a lot of people. I wrote more emails. This was an important koala area. Glenn was working on it and he would already surveyed the area by helicopter. And in some cases, west of the highway, some of the locals said hundreds of koalas would have been killed, that the clearing was so vast. I would sort of worked with Glenn, sharing information with him. He was certainly aware of what I was doing as far as collecting information about the illegal clearing, and uh, I was providing that to them. Big bimble box. There must have been a blight. Open forest here. They've cleared it all. This was a large area that's now under crop. 
I do threatened species research, survey type work. And uh, one of the jobs that I got offered was to do a koala management plan for the Cropper Creek region. The local landholders informed me that they were very concerned about the loss of koala habitat in the Cropper Creek area. And they said the government investigators had been there. They'd done investigation work and you would think that once there's an investigation underway, the clearing would stop. Well, that wasn't the case at all. This man, Turnbull, went about 20 so years ago to the Midwest of America, and they don't have fences, they have white markers for boundaries, not a tree, nothing. You know, he saw it for what it was, big farming, way to go, big machinery. This is what he does, turns grazing properties into cultivation and, uh, and then grows grain on those properties. The Catchment Management Authority was aware that he was buying those properties. They wrote to him and told him that there was koala habitat on those properties and he would not be allowed to clear it. He still had the dozers in there before the contracts were signed. Over a period of a year and, and more, they continued to clear even while they were being investigated and they knew they were being investigated of course. Ian Turnbull was very angry and wanted to deal directly with whoever reported it. The game of cat and mouse went on around the vehicle for over 20 minutes. Robert also took cover behind the vehicle. He tried to reason with Turnbull and told him that Glenn was bleeding badly and needed help. Turnbull moved to the rear of the vehicle and fired another shot, which Robert felt as it went past his head. Glenn then got to the back of the car and set off his emergency beacon. I arrived home from work with the children. We got home it was just after six o'clock on the Tuesday night. There was a message on the machine and I thought that'll be Glenn. When I played it, it was a guy saying this is a message for Glenn Turner um, from Search and Rescue in Canberra that your emergency beacon has been activated, we're trying to locate you, please call us, and left a number. And I didn't think much of it at the time. I thought, oh, maybe it's just been accidentally activated. Robert managed to dial triple zero into his phone. Shortly afterwards, triple zero called him back, but he couldn't pick up the phone because Turnbull was stalking him. He told Turnbull they were not armed and that Glenn had a young family. Turnbull said, you've ruined our family. I did actually try to ring Glenn a couple of times um, just to check. He um, didn't answer, of course. And I thought, OK, I'll ring this police officer and said who I was and um, I even jokingly said, have you located him yet? I, like, I just thought it was just a mistake. And they said, um, "There's yes, there's been a shooting, um, Glenn's been shot and no more information. Thought, OK, I'm going to have to get organised, I'll probably have to drive somewhere to a hospital to be with him. By about 8.30 that night, we still hadn't heard anything, so I eventually rang Maury Police, as I knew that he was out in that area, and I was put on hold for quite some time. 
So that caused me to be a little bit alarmed. It was getting dark. Glenn made an escape, trying to run for the cover of nearby trees. Turnbull raised the gun to his eye and fired at his back, knocking Glenn to the ground. Turnbull then said to Robert, you get out of here, I'm going home to wait for the police. He climbed into his ute, turned it around and drove off. Eventually, I was put through to a detective and he broke the news to me over the phone that Glenn was dead. And um, he said, he asked me, did I have someone with me? And I did, I said, yes, and passed the phone over to my sister and by which time the children had heard my end of the conversation and saw my reaction, so my first priority was to get to them and comfort them. It was not a good way to find out. <laughs> Nothing's, no, there's no good way, I don't think, but that was pretty awful. Certainly doing my own investigation work, I, uh, I've learnt to keep my head low, um, but yeah, it's. I guess you, you know those people are uh, are not going to be happy to have you documenting that they're breaking the law. You just know that you could be vulnerable, so yeah, you sort of play it safe, basically. We didn't know anything about it till the evening. We just had a call from a local friend and she said, have you had a, a, an ecologist or someone staying with you? And I said, no. And we didn't know who it was. So I rang Phil Spark to see if he'd pick up the phone and he did. And, and I said, should I ring, you know? And he said, look, just wait till morning. And by morning we knew it was Glenn because our neighbours had been, been involved. So we knew it was Glenn. Using a GPS Ian Turnbull appeared in Moree Court today charged with murder and was refused bail. Mr Turnbull's family and lawyer had no comment as they left the courthouse. How is Mr Turnbull the link you spoke to? Will he be fighting the charges, sir? I know one of Alison's biggest regrets was that she wasn't with Glenn when he died and that he was out in his own um, for so long and you know, and in danger, and then that he was he was dead and alone overnight um, with just the police and not her around. So, and that's something that you can't ever change. So there was no real way to say goodbye. 